the reason why you're listening and, and the reason why my voice is resonating with you is because we all have something in common. You are just as powerful as I am. And without you know, without the exchange of power, like I wouldn't be where I am. So like every person that is a fan of music, like they're they're a part of the process. And you're powerful. You're powerful. You're as powerful as you believe you are. So here we are, Residence Music Festival on the Weird Music Podcast. We've got Kanika Moore, my spirit animal, hey. on stage. Just finished a mind-blowing Talking Wonder set. So for anyone out there listening, Kanika is in Doom Flamingo. Probably the definition of badass, that band. And to start this off, getting on stage, like, I get shy, like, it's so easy to be timid, and I am so deeply floored by how you just bear your soul on stage, and it is just, it is epic, and, and I want to ask you, like, going into a set, like, maybe you feel nervous or, or whatever, but how do you kind of, like, mentally approach performing? So, I sit in with a lot of people, so if it's, um, if it's people that I already know, like if it's Doom Flamingo or if it's Motown Throwdown, if it's people I'm already familiar with, if I'm nervous, I look at them because like it's we're having a conversation, we're talking to each other, and we're playing music, and I know them, so like I'm not gonna be nervous around my friends. So like I watch them, and just like make sure you do your homework before, but like with with strangers or people I haven't played with on a regular, I do a lot of like self-serving moments where like I go by myself before I step on that stage. I'm not there until it's time for me to go on because I'm soothing myself. Like, like, how do you feel about this song? I feel good. I did my homework. Well, then you're ready. So all you're going to do is go have a conversation with new people. And it, I don't know, you like have a conversation with new people is, is different because like you're asking questions and figuring out like where everybody's comfortable and like, is it okay for me to ask this? And then you start talking about things that you have in common. I feel it's the same thing on the stage. Like when I get on there, if I've already like satisfied myself to be able to get on the stage, I, of course you get jitters. It's like, cause you're excited. And it's like, if I hold it in, it's still gonna come out. You're still gonna bury your soul. Anybody who gets on stage is burying their soul. They're just burying the part that is, you know, most relaxed. And like when I get up there, like I try to make sure that everything, I'm comfortable with everything and I'm ready. Um, yeah. So, so before you're set, you're, you're soothing yourself and you're getting comfortable. So you're not getting like amped up. No, I don't. And the guys do it. They do like, come on, let's go. They do like a couple of jumping jacks. And, and honestly, the adrenaline, you know, it kicks in as soon as you get on stage anyway. So you can get yourself accustomed to that and like build your adrenaline before you get on there. And then it kind of like acclimates, like kind of, it's like, okay, he's been doing this for a minute. So it's okay. And I guess that's why they do that. But like, for me, I like, I'm an introvert. I like, I'm really awkward when I'm around like groups of people. So like being by myself and like being on stage, it's like a different type of relationship because I'm connected to those people out in the audience, but there's a distance. So it doesn't feel like I'm, I'm crowded by people who are, you know, who want something from me. They want something from me, but they're so far away. It's like, I can tell them my story and feel comfortable about that kind of feeling like I'm in a room and bearing myself like without feeling like it's too much pressure like what they're gonna ask me they can't ask me anything because they're only there to be fed like that's nice yeah that's amazing to hear you call yourself an introvert because it's like like for all all us introverts out there to imagine ourselves getting on stage and doing what you're just like no way i could never do that so take me back like to your your development as a singer as a performer like have you was there a time where where you were more timid and like you know this this amazing person like energy we see on stage now have you always been that way or is that something you've kind of evolved to to have with you i had i had to evolve i, I was an i'm an introvert so i didn't know how to enjoy being on the stage and being exposed and wanting to be to myself so like i just had to like over time, you know, when you first started music or you first started something that you like, you fart, you start fart, <laughs> and you start with your your strongest point. And my strongest point was like 
runs and jazz and like whatever I was comfortable with. And you kind of start with that. And you ever notice like when a new artist comes out, they're really heavy on what that is that they're good at. And then they branch out. And I've just been like fortunate enough to be around a lot of musicians that have showed me different ways to execute, you know, a song. Um, I play with a lot of musicians in Charleston and like, it's always like an improv feeling. Like you never know what's going to happen next. And like, the more that that happened, the more comfortable I got in it. It took time because I'm an introvert. Like, I was just like, ah, oh, I'm nervous. Somebody sitting next to me. I don't know the next part. I forgot my mind. Oh, they're looking at me. It's my turn. It's just, you know, all, all the, the jitters. Like, over the years, I learned how to deal with those because I gave myself those self soothing moments. Like, for, especially for an introvert, like, just having that quiet time. It's like the guys know whenever we have a green room, we have to share it. Like, we've compromised. I was like, get out. Just give me a moment. Let me get dressed. And I'm just in there singing to myself. I might be listening to some jazz music or whatever. I might not be listening to anything, but just that moment to have to yourself. Just like, okay, you're getting ready to do this. You prepare yourself and you get out there and it's fine. It's almost like when your your parents take you to the doctor and they don't tell you they're taking you. And it's like, that's like being thrown out on the stage. But like, if they tell you, it's like, all right, we're going. Okay, fine. And then you get there and the doctor's like, how you doing? I'm fine. Like, just preparing yourself. That's all. So I like how you mentioned like soothing and, and yeah. earlier you said, you said relaxed. And it's, I think this is the most... I don't know the word for like insane paradox as to be a singer. Like I mean, we've had voice coaches on the podcast and like talking about singing. There's, there's so much like energy you're throwing out there, but to, to be a great singer, you have to be relaxed. And it's like for, for anyone out there listening, who's also a singer or, or even for me, you know, like what advice do you have for finding that balance between like still getting that intensity, but then also like you're saying, like staying soothed and relaxed. It's like being a creative and being paid for that, there is a delicate balance of revealing yourself, letting out all of that energy and still controlled energy so that people receive what it is that you're trying to give them. And that you ex that you execute it right. So like there it's just that's why creators are so special. You just gotta like find that way to give out all that energy and then control it. Like I had to stop myself a couple of times. I was like, yeah, we're having a good time. Come on, I'm gonna save the talk. I haven't been here in a while. It's very quarantine's going on. I'm like, yeah, all right. And then I'm like, calm down, control your voice because you practiced this run 30 times in the tent before you walked out there. So let's calm down and then execute that and then start jumping around again. Just like finding moments. If you're comfortable with that song, then you know when you can let loose. You know when you gotta breathe. Like I watch a lot of Madonna. I watch like performers, high energy performers who are dancing around and then they stop and it sounds like they're not out of breath. Like Beyonce blows my mind. Like she's just like jumping around, up, up, up around the world, and she's like, "How you doing, ladies?" Like really calm. Like, dude, where did you get your air from? Like. It's just finding that balance and practicing it over and over and over again. And if you love what you do, then you're willing to do it when you're not going to be fed from it by the audience. You're willing to do it at home and just have your cat look at you and just be like, where's my food? It's like you can you can still practice that with that same high energy and not need to be, you know, not need a response from it. Just build the confidence before you get on the stage. There's a lot of like back work you have to do. I know painters and like they're home messing with stuff all the time. They're always painting on something. You don't always see them, but like they're practicing before they, they bring out the big product. And I feel like that's what musicians do. They stay home and they do their work and like yeah, and again, I've been fortunate enough to be around different musicians and see the way that they handle things and just kinda nitpick what works for me and you know what doesn't. Just you know just picking stuff up along the way. I think it's amazing how the principles of, of preparing yourself for, for a show, practicing music, even just singing itself, like the the balance between building up this energy, but then like harnessing it yeah. and channeling it right. It, it is like an analogy for how to be effective and really like anything. Yeah. I, I think that's so cool. So like stepping to the side here, we just went, you know, like freaking 20 months, no live music. Yeah. And man, it's music is something like for any any of us here with your music podcast it's so like therapeutic it's like a spiritual experience for us and like so now going so long without it but being 
back in it. Being at Resonance Music Festival right now, it's, it's surreal. How would you kind of explain just how like magical and transformative a music festival like Resonance can be? When I was, uh, when I was younger, I was like an oddball, um, and like I didn't have a lot of friends, so I would always like, I always longed for friends who were quirky like me. So my, the friends that I did have were, it was like the nerd that sat in the back of the classroom, but was too shy to speak up, and like I, I gathered all those people together because I had a lot in common with them. When you come to a music festival, there is vagabonds, there's, there's people who are quirky, no body shaming, you want your skin out, you want to enjoy yourself. This place is beautiful. Like I can't stop looking at like at this view. And, like they, they always find these great locations. They put all these people together. They've been working their asses off. They've been trying to get themselves together and they get to this festival and they're just bright colors and women with their skin out and men with their skin out and just like just one love and there's great food and it's just like you've been preparing yourself for this moment. I would say to anyone who hasn't been to a festival before, if you ever felt like you needed something to release, like some people go camping or some people like go to the movies, but like this is like a whole ordeal. You spend the weekend here with yourself and with these new people who feel like this is a place where they can really let go. Like whatever is going on with you in your world, you work in a nine to five and you hate your job, you come to the festival and you let it out. It's why we see so many weird things here because people have been longing to come in here and express themselves and be fed by music. And then I mean, you're putting so many musicians together. So what you get is like, you got a badass band on there and they're like, oh, Kanika Moore is coming on stage. You know why? Because we got this whole festival and she's just over there hanging out and we're bros, so we're gonna jump up there. So you get like these collabs and then all of a sudden they come out with an album and I'm featured on there or they're featured online. It just, opportunity to grow. It's just like, we're all these people who have like one thing in common and they just like find more things and then we find another festival and we find another beautiful place it's like man the last time i was at west virginia it was just this beautiful so like even more so during quarantine and like while everybody was hunkered down and just waiting to see what's going on with the world even more so we want to be here because there's plenty of places for you to move out and be by yourself you can come to a festival and keep your distance away from people or you can go in the front and enjoy yourself like you have so many options here, but the one thing that you don't have to worry about is there's somebody here who has something in common. Like, you're at a music festival. You love music, so do they. You love to bury your skin when you're out here, so do I. You like stickers? I love stickers. You like to uh, recycle and clean up stuff? You like grasshoppers? Well, it's too bad, because they're here. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, they're, they're just, it's just too pretty out here, like, to not, Every festival, it's, it's just, it's always a really nice location. They always find these accommodating ways to just keep people here for the weekend. Like, I saw the cops out at the end of the road, and I was just like, there's still an alternative, and there's still a brighter side to look at it, because it's like, you can come in here, you can stay in here the entire weekend, and not even have to worry about, you know, whatever they have to take care of when you're out there. It's just like, stay in here in the safe zone with common-minded people, and enjoy yourself. It's incredible how there's just like almost 10,000 people here yeah. and there's like no judgment like yeah. people let their it. full self fly and I Absolutely. feel like I feel like people really tap into the best version of themselves at music festivals they've been, they've been cooped up they want they wanted some freedom they wanted to come out and, and this is one of the places where we do that and now it's even more powerful because we've been staying in the house a little bit longer so this is nice this is therapy I get fed when I come here like the first couple of shows, like I said, you know, growing and progressing. When we first started coming to festivals, they're like, you want to go? I was like, uh-uh, too many people. Nope. And then, you know, I got blue hair, so I stand out and, like, conversations happen within the moment because you got like-minded people. We all have something in common, so of course they want to talk to you. Just, like, getting used to that. But, like, yeah, this is, like, there's a place for you, even if you are an introvert. Or if you love talking to people, there's plenty of them here. Or if you like nature like deer hanging out here at night time like they hear the noise but like some of them are like what snacks are over there like, you know, yeah not my snacks though no not my snacks 
I don't really know what deer can eat, so I haven't fed one yet. Fucking leaves. Leaves. And, and if you're if you're having a garden, don't let the deer go around. Don't let the deer go. Don't yeah. trample and eat that or eat everything. Diving deeper down this path, though, like music, it's you know for me, for for all of us, it's so just like healing. Like we come here and and we get inspired and like since before like cities before culture music was this thing that is tribal and it's it's ceremonial it's spiritual so you know speaking on behalf of all of us fans like like our lives kind of to a degree revolve around like live music and musicians like yourself like our favorite musicians they they mean the world to us it's it's so inspirational to come here and to see performances like yours and I want to ask you, like, does that does that land? Like, do you feel a sense of like purpose and meaningfulness with kind of like what you what you and your the music and your performance and your energy, the way it inspires, what it means to fans? Like, is that something that like resonates with you? That's that's something that's on your mind. It absolutely does. You know, I um, I I like when I wake up in the morning. Sometimes I'll get like trapped in social media and I'll go on Instagram and I like go scrolling through there and then you see all these beautiful filters of these beautiful women and you see like things that they've done to make themselves more presentable you know quote unquote and and, you know when we come to these festivals like there's this moment where I, I think it's why you see like nipple covers and people have their skin out. Like in that moment, you remind yourself that no matter what you look at on a day to day basis, not only are you beautiful, but like there's there's somewhere that you can go to feel more so like that. And it does resonate with me because I feel it when they see me. They're like, oh my God, yeah, yeah. like I went up to some girl and I was like, man, I've been I've been keeping my mask on and just like keeping my distance. And then every once in a while, I'll be like. I'm drawn to her. I'm gonna go and give her a hug. And they start crying. And she's just like, I'm gonna remember this moment forever. And it does resonate. People, people tell you because everyone's so comfortable here. So they're gonna tell you how they feel. Like, I love you. I'm watching you sing here, and I've seen you grow, and you're great. And I love your music, and thank you so much because they appreciate it. I mean, we're so close to everyone. Like, we're we're just we're fans. This they can see us through here. So like, we talk to each other. We share love, like they, they give us they give us energy, we give them energy. It's like it's an exchange of power. It's just like you know, I don't I don't have the ability to reach you if you don't open your ears. And these people are already here. They don't even know who I am. They came for this festival and they didn't even know the entire lineup. You know what people do, they they're like, Oh, I see this person and this person, this person, and then you're walking by to go get a hot dog and you're like who is that? And then all of a sudden, expanding, and then you're meeting more people. So yeah, I feel it. I feel it. I love it. It's why we want to be here. I was just talking to uh, Ross, and he was like, "Can we just live at festivals?" I was like, "Yep, we sure can." You know, when everything opens back up, and and fortunate enough, festivals are coming up with savvy ways for us to continue this. So, so maybe I'm just gonna be living at festivals from now on. Just gonna lose my shoes. And just start walking around there, bringing an air mattress and bringing an air mattress <laughs> or soft grass. You just like pop no dead bugs and the mosquitoes. No, yeah. it's a soft grass, dude. Yeah, grass you got a soft. tent over it. Yeah, no. people have hammocks. Anyways, Kanika Moore on the Weird Music Podcast, Doom Flamingo. Hey. So grateful that exists. Um, man, Kanika, anything you want to leave listeners off with your fans? Like what? What is one thing you want to leave everyone off with a message from you to them? Um, the reason why you're listening and, and the reason why my voice is resonating with you is because we all have something in, power, in common. You are just as powerful as I am. And without you know, without the exchange of power, like I wouldn't be where I am. So like every person that is a fan of music, like they're they're a part of the process. And you're powerful. You're powerful. You're as powerful as you believe you are. Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Power to the people. Power to the people. Follow Doom Flamingo. Yeah. Catch them out. Spotify, all that. See them at the festivals. Kanika, thank you for, for all that you are and all that you do. This has been the Weird Music Podcast, y'all. Much love. Thank you for listening. Shout out to the sponsor, SEM Tickets. We love y'all. We'll see you real soon. 
And I want to give one more big shout out to Ohio's own Sacred Harvest Music Festival. Octave Cat with Eli from Dopapod, Jesse from Lotus, Cheesecake with Hauser and Chucky Love, Bacano, Sub T. We'll be there the last weekend of September and hope to see you there as well. Much love, y'all.